Hi everyone and welcome back to another Emory Security YouTube video. Today we're going to be looking at Mr. Robot on TryHackMe. In spirit of Mr. Robot going onto Netflix and me finally starting to watch it, I decided what better way to celebrate than do a try hack me box called Mr. Robot. So there are three flags to this, key one, key two, and key three. To get started, let's head on over to our terminal and we're going to do an Nmap scan. Now Nmap is the network mapper and essentially what that does is it will scan ports on various hosts that you supply. Because we're only doing one box, it's gonna be on one host. So we'll do TAC P TAC for all ports. We'll do TAC ST just to make sure that's doing only TCP and not UDP. We'll do a TAC SC as well to do scripts, as well as the IP address that we got assigned by TriHackMe. So we'll paste this on in, and then we will do a TAC VVV for very, very verbose. And we will do a Kali, and we could see that there is port 22 port 80 and port 443 associated with this box. So whenever you see a CTF challenge, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're going to wanna do a GoBuster scan if port 80 or 443 are on the host. So we'll do a GoBuster dir for brute forcing directories. We'll do attack u, we'll do HTTP colon slash slash, and then we'll put in our IP address. We'll do attack w, and then we'll do user share word list, We'll do derb as well as common.txt. This is just the beginning. This is what I like to do to start. And then if we don't find anything, we'll move on to a different kind of word list and see what we gather. But within the derb roster scan, what we're looking for is status code 200 or status code 302. Those are the two main ones that we're gonna be looking for. So looking back at the GoBuster command, we could see that there are a few endpoints that it has retrieved, such as robots.txt. It's got license, intro, a bunch of others. So we can head on over to say robot.txt first. So let's go over here and just click on HTTP. And this looks like it is a terminal, but we're not going for that. We're going for robots.txt. And as we can see here, there is two different entries. There is a key dash one of three txt as well as a F society DIC file. So we'll click on key and we'll paste it into our URL and we retrieve the first key to the challenge. So let's come over back to TriAcme and paste it in. And we can also go to this directory here, the F society. And it looks like just a huge word list of random stuff, which is not really too useful for us at this very moment, but we'll keep this in mind in case we do retrieve a user or something along those lines. So let's head back on over here and we could just scroll through and see what else we have. So we have an index.html, which we really don't care too much about, I don't think. We have a WP login when you do slash login. So this is a WordPress site. We have WP admin and we click come over here. It says users blog and then username as well as password. We could look a little bit further down and there's also a license. So we could check out the licensing of the website and see what there is. So I got over to license. We see that it says what you do, just pull code from rapid nine or some blank. Since when did you become a script kitty? And there's more to this file. Do you want a password or something? So we see here that this looks to be a password. So we'll come on over here and we will take it to CyberChef. If you don't know what CyberChef is, it is a powerful tool that essentially decodes and encodes various different things. If it's encrypted or something on those lines, you can most likely decipher the text. So it looks like it's from base 64 and we see that we do retrieve a username and potential password. So we will copy it this and we will throw it into our WP admin. And it looks like we're into the WordPress site, which is great. And we can tell that we're an administrator because A, we do see that it says WP admin on the top here, but also we have access to all the users within the WP admin site as well. Because we're an admin, we can head on over to themes just to see what theme we're using. And it looks like we're using the 2015 theme. So what you can do within themes is you can modify them to whatever you'd like just by clicking on the editor. But because the theme is PHP, we can actually upload a reverse shell 
and retrieve a shell onto the server itself. I clicked on content.php, but you can choose any sort of PHP file you'd like. I just chose content.php and we can head on over to revshells.com which is a powerful tool that you can use to obtain reverse shells. It's just a reverse shell generator. So we can head on over to our terminal and we can type in IPA and retrieve our IP address with the ton zero interface. And we'll paste it on into our IP and we'll change the port to 4444. And because we're going based on PHP, we're going to want to find a PHP reverse shell. I've always had luck with the Pentest Monkey reverse shell, so I'll stick to that. We'll just click on copy here, head back on over to the theme, paste it in, and click on update file. And there we go. It says file updated successfully. So because we're an administrator, we can actually access this specific file automatically using the URL through a get request. So we can head on over to wp-admin slash and then we can go to themes slash 2015 content.php. Now, before we run this, what we're going to want to do as well is we're going to want to come to our terminal and we're going to want to do NC for netcat LVMP 4444. And essentially what this is doing is this is going to open up the port 4444 for us on our Kali Linux. And it's going to listen on this port for any connections back. And what we're going to do is when we click enter on the URL, it's going to send a connection request back to our server and we will retrieve a shell, which then we can perform additional actions on to the server itself. So going back to the URL, we can click on enter and this may take a second, but if we head on to our terminal, we should see a connection back and it looks like I put WP admin. This should actually say WP content. So now when we click enter, we see that it turns into a blank screen. However, we see that we do have a shell. So let me make this bigger. And if we do a who am I, we could see that we are the daemon user. So this is called an unstable shell, meaning if we try to do control C, it's going to completely access out of the shell and we're going to have to redo the entire process all over again. But to fix this, we can create something called a stabilized shell. And by doing that, we can do a which Python to make sure Python is installed. And knowing this, we can do Python taxi import PTY pty.spawn bin bash and we click enter and we can see that now we get a little bit more of a beautified terminal but there's still more to do this is now a semi-stabilized shell we can then do an export term equals x term do a control z to your terminal so now you should be outside and it suspends the process and you're going to want to do an stty raw tack echo semicolon fg and this is going to foreground the previous process that we just suspended. And now we have a fully working stabilized shell. If we do an LS, we could do that. If we do control C's, we see that we can do that now as well. So let's head on over to the home directory and see what we have. We can go to robot and we'll do an LS tech LA. And we see that the second flag that we have to retrieve is only readable by the robot user. And because we're a daemon user and not robot user, we need to figure out a way to privilege escalate to the robot user. And we can see here as well that there is a password.rawmd5 file. And when we cat this out, we could see that we have robot colon as well as this MD5 hash. So we can copy this on over to something called crackstation.net, but it essentially already cracked previous hashes that you can throw in here and it'll see if the hash matches a hash that's within its word list. Crack hash and we can see that the MD5 was cracked and it's ABCD all the way through Z. So we can copy this on over to our terminal now and we can perform additional actions as the robot user. So we'll switch users to robot and again we'll paste in that password that we just got and now if we do a who am i we could see that we are the robot user now this again is not such a stable shell right we don't see our current directory we don't see where we're located we don't really see anything so what we could do now is we could do the exact same thing that we did before so instead of me retyping it i'm just going to quickly copy and paste it on over and we can see now that we are the robot user. So we can clear this and we have a beautified shell. So now what we could do is we could do a cat key two of three 
and retrieve the second flag. So let's head on over to TriHackMe and paste it in. So the final flag involves trying to privilege escalate and gain access as root. The best way to go about doing this is by using a script called Linpees. If you don't have Limpies on your Kali, head on over to your terminal and just do sudo apt install peas with two S's. Make sure to supply your password and let that run. And now what you could do is you could type in peas and you can see here that there is now a user share peas with two different directories. There's linpeas and wimpeas. Because we're on Linux, we're going to be using linpeas, specifically linpeas.sh. If you're on Windows, you can always use the Windows peas. And this is just a privilege escalation script that you can use to quickly identify low-hanging fruits that can privilege escalate your user to an administrator or something else. So now that we have peas installed, we can come on over to linpeas by doing cd linpeas. And we're going to do a python3 tacm http.server on port 80. And this is going to create an HTTP server on port 80 for us. So we can head on over to our slash temp directory on the web server that we have a reverse shell on. And we'll do a wget and we'll do HTTP colon slash slash. And before I do this, we actually need our IP address. So I'm just going to quickly X out and grab our IP address again. We'll paste it on in. And again, we'll just scroll up and put the web server there. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the linpeas.sh. And this may take a second and we could see that we do retrieve a connection. We could see that it was downloaded successfully and saved as linpeas.sh. So we can just double verify that and we could see linpeas.sh is right here with our user, but it doesn't have the execution permission. So we're going to have to do chmod plus x linpeas.sh. And now when we do that, we could see that it now has the execute permissions across the board. So what we could do is we could do a dot slash linpeas.sh and we could see that it is colored, it's beautified, and we're looking for anything that has red and yellow because that means that there is a 95% chance that it is a privilege escalation vector. So this may take a few minutes. I'm going to hop back when we find something. So looking back at the output of linpeas after it's done running, we see that there is a permission set called a sewage bit that's accessible through the user local bin nmap. And this can be exploited for privilege escalation and we can find the steps to do so by going to something called GTFO bins, which has a bunch of different binaries that you can exploit to obtain privilege escalation. So we can come to the search bar and just type in nmap. And if we scroll down, we can see that there's just a bunch of different things that you could do with nmap in regards to privilege escalation, something that will work is the interactive session that you can do with nmap. So we're going to head on over to our terminal and we're just going to type in nmap tac tac interactive. When we click enter, we can see that we are in an interactive mode. And because the sewage bit is on the root and it's owned by root, what you can do is you could do an exclamation point sh and we can see that we are the root user. So who am I? We're root. If we go to slash root, we can cat out the key three of three and paste it in to try hack me. And that's all for this box. If you did enjoy, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you did find an alternative method to privilege escalating or gaining access to the box, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your story and how you did it. Other than that, that's all I have. So please like subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.